calling the meeting to order. It is six o'clock. Um, first thing we have welcome introductions. Do you want to introduce yourself, or do you yeah. want us to introduce ourselves, or what do you want? I'm, I'm Tim Brinson, and new to the board. And um, I'm actually originally from Indiana. Moved away 40 years ago. Grew up on a small farm out in Whitehall, and moved away. Joined the Air Force. Was a gunner on a nuclear armed B-52 bomber until my job ended with the Cold War. Became a police officer in Pasadena, Texas. Did that for 25 years, 20 of those years in child sexual abuse and child sexual exploitation. And retired from doing that, moved to Bellingham, Washington. And the perfect house came up for sale in Bloomington. And here I am back <laughs> after 40 years. <laughs> Maybe go around the room. I don't know if you know everybody, but let's at least for those who are here, why don't we do some introductions? They don't need to be super long, but quick uh, name and what you do. And Let me just start right Go ahead. I'm Phil Emerson. I'm retired in higher education and a pastor. John Verda with uh, IU Ventures. Uh, Ryan Pedigo. Scott Oldham. Max Lutton, Deputy Chief of the Police Department. Tanya Dapper, I'm Assistant Chief. <laughs> and I'm Barb McKinney. I worked for the city legal department for quite a while. I'm retired. And you've met us. Yes, I've met you. That's quick and easy. Excellent. Welcome aboard. Mm -hmm. Glad you're here. The next thing is certification of executive session, which just means I need to sign. We had just had executive session, so I won't get yelled at. <laughs> yeah. State the official. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Let's read the conflict of interest uh, and then the certification. Not on of the agenda. Okay. I know okay. Not. This is something we have to read every month. If any board member has any personal or financial conflict with any issues or individuals on the agenda, then please be sure to accuse yourself during these portions of the meeting. Is that an issue for anybody? Um, now I'll read the statement about certification of executive session. The board held an executive, executive session on August 20th, 2024 for the sole purpose of receiving information about prospective employees and current employees. No other topics were discussed and no final board actions were taken. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll go on to consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda for this evening contains the following items. Approval of minutes from the July 15th, 2024 special session. Approval of payroll for the period of periods of July 26th and August 9th, and approval of claims for the periods of August 2nd and August 16th. Does any member of the board want to have want to have any of these items removed from the consent agenda to be discussed separately? Um, hearing none, does anyone have any objections to any of the items on the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Um, the next item on agenda is the fire department. Uh, or do we, we should do this. For, for, I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm going to do Falcons and the coincide. Yeah, Let's go to the police department business. Excuse me. Uh, this is our statistical report from last month. Um, you can see our calls for service are just a tick down. Not rare uh, for, you know, how we, how things progress for us. Our calls are still up quite a bit from 2022 and with on pace where we were 2023. So nothing there. Um, definitely going to pick up in the next few days. <laughs> um, to date, you can see where we're at as far as our crime index and crime totals. Um, if you've got questions specific, we can answer some of them. A lot of the ones from 2024 will still be pending criminal cases. So there's not a lot we can discuss with that in an open session. Traffic stops uh, continue to go up again. This is part of the effort where we uh, talked about trying to get some of our crime statistics down and interdict some of the violent crime. Uh, it did have some success last year and continues to do so. Uh, and we continue to um, see progress out of that effort. Uh, weapons calls continue to fall. Again, we would attribute a lot of that back to some of the traffic enforcement, some of the other efforts we've got going on. Uh, still the number at that number level concerns us, um, but it's, it's definitely trending downward somewhat. Uh, arrests, again, we've talked about this before. They're so unpredictable year to year. There's no sharp increase, no sharp decrease. As you'll see last year, there was 185. This year, there's been 202. Um, we'll see what we turn up with at the year in the aggregate in the end, but traditionally, they stay within normal bounds. Juvenile referrals, again, uh, they were down from last year. That could have been last year. We had a series of juvenile arrests for whatever 
Um, again, this year we trending to about where we usually see it in July. Um, this is not the end of a hate crime reporting period. Uh, we're in the middle of that, although you can see we had zero between April and June. Um, they were, they're quarterly, so you won't see the next real report until October, which will encompass July to September. The nuisance calls for service. Um, again, this is, we could pretty much substitute last month's graph for this one and you'd see the same thing. The majority of them are disturbances, then you have intoxication and some vandalism calls. Again, a lot of these, as we've talked about before, mimic each other because traditionally you have intoxications with disturbances and you have vandalisms with intoxication. So you see all these things kind of wrapped into one. Training for this month, uh, 522 hours. We had uh, 27 officers uh, attend the 8-hour trades or operator course. Two officers went to what's called Desert Snow. It's a drug interdiction course. Uh, three officers went to basic SWAT school. And then CERT SWAT had 12 officers, 19 hours each. And K-9 training had 17 hours. Community engagement, there were 51 total events this month. 30.4 hours involved. Uh, it seems kind of backwards, I get it, but some are 15, 20 minutes at a time. 57 personnel involved. Uh, we had the back to school events at the reserve at Chandler's Glen. Boys and Girls Club summer camp presentation. Uh, our community service specialist did bike outreach, index outreach and public education. And our daily uh, downtown resource officer meetings with the local service providers. Upcoming, uh, we already missed National Night Out. Uh, that went over very, very well. Uh, we had a bunch of different agencies involved and several hundred people showed up for that. Yeah, I think we handed out, what did we say, something like 300 hot dogs and uh, 200, 250 yeah. cheeseburgers, I think. And so it was a big event. Uh, this year was a little bit different. As Deputy Chief mentioned, uh, we went ahead and we invited the Sheriff's Office, IUPD, uh, City Fire, Monroe Fire, and Lifeline brought a helicopter. So we had several different uh, agencies represented there. And I think it, I think it definitely helped uh, with, with some good attendance. Uh, got to feed some kids. I got to crawl around some police stuff and fire stuff and see some things so I think it really went well. Pretty neat. Um, Forever Friends which is a partnership with the local animal shelter featured the uh, animals that are up for adoption on our websites. Uh, Be a Hero Touch a Truck at Chick-fil-A that's come and gone that was very well done and then we've got a detective presentation of the philanthropic educational organization meeting. Sorry I don't have the exact date on that one. Police social workers, uh, 24 referrals for the month, new referrals, 330 ongoing contacts. See some of their summaries here, which is they assist a client uh, getting new medications for a psychiatric medication, getting a new prescriber for those. Assisted a military veteran with getting some health care. Uh, worked with the county veteran service officer, Department of Veterans Affairs. And they assist a client for accessing treatment for substance abuse disorder outside Monroe County. Uh, they spend a lot of time with several contacts. I know they've got one contact they're spending daily contact with him. One client they're spending daily contact with, sorry. I would probably anticipate seeing those numbers go up a little bit. Uh, we just hired a new, <coughs> she's not technically a social worker. Um, I'm sorry, it slips me what her degree is in, but so she's not technically a social worker, but she is a mental health specialist. So we just hired another one. So usually, uh, obviously when we're back up to three, those numbers will probably increase. Yeah. <coughs> As far as appreciation this week, um, this month, one of the community service specialists, uh, actually a brand new one, uh, had only been on his own for a while, stopped and helped a distressed elderly lady. Uh, we had a blown out tire in the bus lane down on Hillside and Woodlawn, a very busy street. Uh, he got there pretty quickly, um, used his vehicle to protect her and her vehicle, and helped change the tire um, during the rainstorm. <laughs> now we're back to general business. Um, as far as general business, we continue to work with the budget, with the administration. Uh, that'll be going to council soon. And I think that's about it. You won't see any large expenditures this month. You'll see some coming through next month. Uh, and we'll kind of inform you about what those are at the time. But they're constructing a parking lot and a training facility down at our range complex. The parking lot is for uh, electric vehicles because they can't be put in a structure because if we're holding them as evidence, Oftentimes it's after a crash and sometimes they spontaneously combust some 12 to 14 hours later. Uh, so they can't go in a structure. Uh, so no one in the county had an evidentiary area for that. So 
we had some money we'd set aside for a parking lot and it seemed like a good use thereof so you may see something on that before we get to the next meeting but probably not anything else where's uh, that lot in the south do you know where the range is the range complex yeah yeah, yeah. all built in same lots that we have the range and the fire training tower then we have a building up on the hill we call the annex right next to where fire's getting ready to build their logistics facility and right in the middle of that uh, we had an area that was level enough that we could build a 40 by 30 area that would uh, enhance the area and help us what we needed to do Thanks. so uh, we talked a little bit about purchases and procurements those are about the only things you're going to see and then that brings us down to personnel for captain ryan or captain pedigo uh current staffing is 89 out of 105 uh, so we are 16 short uh, we have two that are in the fpo program should hopefully get out fairly soon and we have five that go to the academy starting on monday so they'll be gone until mid-december at uh, the law enforcement academy uh, unfortunately we do have four currently on extended uh, sick or injury leave uh, and one on extended military leave as well so uh, staffing remains uh, something that is obviously of concern um, we do have two that i just uh, that Barbara signed off on for me last week that I've mailed their final paperwork into the state. Uh, so they should be probably onboarding within the next four to five weeks, depending upon when I hear back from the state uh, and get their approval and then give them time to give their current employer uh, appropriate notice of uh, that they're leaving. And one of those is a certified officer and one is not. Uh, right now, we're I'm kind of holding off on holding a hiring process until uh, we see what happens with the budget. Uh, the mayor has indicated that uh, she wishes to uh, open the contract to discuss uh, salaries with the union. So we're kind of full in our training program right now anyway with the ones that we have currently in it. So I'm just kind of holding off until we see what those numbers uh, might come out of uh, as we go into budget season here. My budget kind of has dominated everything for the past couple of weeks. So that's kind of where we are with that. Um, CERT ARV deployment, none other activity this month required the use of the ARV. Thank you. Any questions about police department business? We can move on to fire department business. No. So this is our year to date uh, totals 30, 3,400, almost 3,500 uh, responses. I'd say the majority of them are in the city. Our IU responses, false alarms, continue to be the highest, and they will continue to stay the highest. Uh, response heat map, these are all the runs just for July, so the location. So uh, you don't really have any, there are a couple red spots, but that's where we're going most often. Response, response times, uh, like I said, doing well there out of 105 or 185 we're looking you know 106 well under the 240 uh, seconds arrival arrival time on a fire call so it's, um, public engagement and uh, prevention so uh, inspection goals they have already met their goal for this year and it's actually in, they even increased it already from last year last year it was 1600 now it's 1850 and they beat their met that goal and that's last year was the first time they had ever done that um, so uh, adults educated for the last two years you can kind of see where we're at with that and children and then the visits for schools training the green lines where we want to be top line for july that's where we are right now um, John Summerlot from Indiana University Emergency Management came in and did uh, department-wide the search and rescue. So it's just the basics on uh, not like fire search, but someone just out, out in the wilderness or you know wandering off because they're dementia or anything like that. Uh, two personnel went to their uh, rope operations and technician level classes. Uh, we had somebody go to a cruise, went to Duke Energy uh, for uh, live wire safety. And then we started uh, 
the gentleman that you guys approved last meeting, right? He's, uh, he got assigned a red shift and he did his training during July. What is it? Is there a black shift and a green shift? In the There's red, black, and gold. Red, black, and gold. Yes. What, those are just time slots that you... That's what we've historically called them. It was um, once upon a time we got Budweiser calendars and they designated the shifts every third day, <laughs> red, gold, black. Um, we call them A, B, C, one, two, three. It's just a, but other other calendars are red, green, and black or whatever. So, but we we those of us who work gold shift, we always said that gold was A one, right, Gene? That's the best. So, but that's how they. <laughs> we can't make this up. <laughs> for our mobile integrated health care, these are mm -hmm. their statistics for the month. Uh, they did not graduate anyone uh, this month, which is unusual. Um, the average visit per client is 8.6, which is slightly down from last month. 36 services engaged, 36 different agencies were involved in those. Referring agencies are three. Um, most of that is from the um, fire department. They're internal referrals, but we do have external re agencies referring inward. Um, we did get a uh, $75,000 grant from IDHS, um, for which Chief Litwin is very glad because one of them will be a vehicle for the new team members that we're going to hire later this year. Um, we did have a patient who had a um, traumatic brain injury. At one point, he kept getting trespassing charges, but he was, was a medical issue, but he's got all his criminal charges dismissed. Um, an ill patient, like I said, he got, uh, was referred to MIH, and now that he can um, take care of himself, and now he's happy, hmm. much happier than what he was before. And then we have another one, uh, they said a patient had an offer accepted on a new residence. So it's safer for everyone involved, for them, for the patient, for the family, uh, and for the crews who were responding there uh, to that on a regular basis. So, and they said they've already in, been in and done their safety check on the new home. So those are excellent. So cool. thanks. Any questions regarding? Happy. Um, we're very happy with that. So general business, is this where we do this section? We just, that's, that's you. Sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, general business, we, we've been fairly dominated by budget related items also. So that's what we've been working on. It's gone very well. We're looking forward to presenting it next week and hopefully everything goes smoothly with that as well. Uh, as far as purchases, we were finally able to secure the UTV that's been uh, in on order for quite a while. UTV is? It's a, it's like an AT, like an all-terrain vehicle okay. that we can outfit with fire suppression or EMS equipment. Okay. Uh, we had two of them, and fresh off the line in usage, a tree fell on one mm. uh, while being used, so it could have been much worse than it was. Uh, there's an insurance claim, and we finally were able to get it back. So um, you'll see that money spent on that, but it ultimately it was a result of the insurance money that was waiting for it. Uh, other than that, you'll just see some miscellaneous uh, purchases related to our ongoing bond projects, just kind of outfitting those stations and, and the fire suite. Uh, R roughly, what's the budget request that you'll be submitting? Uh, in total, it'd be just over twenty million. Twenty million. Yes, sir. And what's just out of curiosity, what's just more than the twenty-four million there? Twenty-four range. Thanks. And how big an increase is that from this year? Uh, it all depends on what kind of personnel raises the mayor's office chooses to pursue. Right. Uh, other than that, our budget remains flat from last year. So, no new projects, no new anything else. We're trying to get everything back to staffing levels. Are you looking at like five percent, or do you know? Honestly, don't know. I mean, there's been talk of, of a bunch of different connotations, and I'd, I'd really hate to steal their thunder by putting out there what they're thinking currently. Don't want you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and my answer also is dependent that on some of the category one items. It, the contract's out to vote right now, so the numbers that are plugged in would be as if that moved forward. That's how you could have said five million, and I would have had no idea. So 20, <laughs> 20 to thirty-ish rough stuff is roughly our budgets are about the same, but we have dispatch as part of our budget, which accounts for the difference. Okay. Thanks. Uh, as far as personnel, oh, sorry. Um, so this is it's voting on the 
people we talked about executive yeah. session. Um, can and we discussed uh, Je Justin Webb. Can I get a motion to promote Justin Webb to the rank of chauffeur effective August 5th, 2024? Moved. Can I get a second? Second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The motion carries. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm losing my voice. Um, can I get a motion for a conditional offer of employment to J Judson Garvin contingent upon the successful completion of all steps required in a high hiring process? I'm sorry. Brooks no Burke. way. Well, Justin Garvin was last one. Justin. Justin Brommer. I'm sorry, we didn't. I didn't oh. update the name down there. Okay. Yeah. Justin Correction. Bros sorry. Justin Brosmer. <laughs> yeah, like okay. We were not talking about Judson. That sounded familiar when I said it. We were talking about uh, Justin Brosmer. And same thing. Now, can I get a motion to approve him contingent upon all the um, completing completing all the steps required in the hiring process? So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor. Uh, hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Okay, now we, I got the right name here. Okay. Um, can I get a motion for a conditional offer of employment to Robert? I never can say his last name. Levisic. Levisic. Contingent upon the successful completion of all steps required in the hiring process. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No, the motion carries. I'm going to need help with this name too. Can, I, yeah. can I get a motion for conditional employment of, of offer employment to Luke Kirinchenko, contingent upon the successful completion of all steps required in the hiring process? Yep. Um, any, any discussion? I'm hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, can I get a motion for conditional offer employment to Diego Alinas, contingent upon the successful completion of all steps required in the hiring process. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The motion carries. Um, can I get a motion for conditional offer employment to Clarence Darson, contingent upon the successful completion of all steps required in the hiring process? Uh, so moved. Second. Um, any discussion? Okay. <laughs> Nobody cares what you write. I'm um, hearing none. All, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. And finally, can I get a motion for conditional offer employment to Tanner Wood, contingent upon the successful completion of all steps required in the hiring process? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any old business? I'll just offer a quick current update on our personnel status on the department. We currently have four vacancies, of which you see now we have uh, personnel slated to fill, and we have three uh, individuals on light duty. We have no long term <coughs> illness or injuries currently. Thank you. Yeah. Any other old business? Any new business? Um, any communication from the public? Meeting adjourned. Thank you all.